Alright everybody, here's how to solve the water potential practice problems that we did in class. So to begin, these formulas that are listed at the top, these are what are included on your AP Bio formula sheet. So these are not things that you need to memorize, you just need to know how to use them. So for this first one, we are trying to solve for the water potential. So I can use the equation, water potential is equal to pressure potential plus solute potential. And then I just plug in my numbers. Three plus negative 4.5 is equal to negative 1.5 bars. Remember our units here. And for question number two, they're asking us if that cell from question one is placed in a beaker, what direction will the net flow of water be? So I will draw this scenario, so here's my cell in a beaker. And as was mentioned, the cell has a water potential of negative 1.5 bars. And they give us the solute potential of the solution or the sugar water in the beaker. So in order to know which way water is gonna move, I need to determine the water potential of my solution. So since it's in a beaker, we can assume it's in an open container. And according to what we were given on the formula sheet, an open container, um, when that is the case, the pressure potential is zero. So in that case, my water potential is equal to my solute potential for the solution. So it's equal to negative four bars. So the cell is negative 1.5 bars and the solution is negative four bars. Since water potential, um, we're gonna move from high water potential to low water potential. We are going to go from a high value, negative 1.5, to a lower value, negative four. So the net flow of water will be out of the cell. So that would be my answer. Net flow is out of the cell. If I go to number three, very similar question to number two. So it's the same cell being put into a beaker, but this time they give us the solute potential in a different unit. They give us it in megapascals. So they tell us the unit conversion. I'm gonna need to convert the negative 0.15 megapascals into bars so that I'm able to make a, a comparison. So the way I do that, I set up my conversion chart and I know that one megapascal is equal to 10 bars. By doing this, I can cancel these units and I'm left with bars, which is what I'd like. Any numbers on the top, I multiply together. So that would be negative 1.5. And then I divide by the numbers on the bottom. So I'm dividing by one leaves me with negative 1.5 bars. So because the water potential inside the cell is equal to the water potential outside the cell, we're gonna have no net flow of water. Question number four, we are given the water potential of root tissue and we're told that we put it into a solution. So again, I'm gonna draw out my diagram. Here's my root cell in a solution. So the water potential of my root cell is negative 3.3 bars. And all I'm told about the solution is its molarity and its temperature. So this should be a clue to me that I'm going to be using this equation, the solute potential for a solution, because some of the variables given here are the concentration and the temperature. So I'm going to find that solute potential of the water, it's negative ICRT, which is equal to negative 1, since this solution is sucrose, as it states on our formula sheet, I is going to be 1 for sucrose because sucrose does not ionize in the water. It might be a different story for different molecules, and we will get to that in a later problem. So I have negative 1 times my concentration, which is 0.1 times R, which is a constant, 0 
and then multiplied by my temperature. As noted on the formula, my temperature is in Kelvin, so I need to take whatever it is in Celsius and add 273. So I'm going to take 20 and add 273 to it. Now it's just simple multiplication, and you are given a calculator on the AP exam, or you are allowed to use one. So if I calculate this and I round, I'm going to get about negative 2.43 bars. So comparing the negative 2.43 to myself. Again, the reason I can do this is because we are in an open beaker. So for the whole solution, right, water potential is the pressure potential plus solute potential. But since I'm in an open beaker, my pressure potential is zero. So that means that my water potential is equal to my solute potential for the solution. So when comparing the two, again, water is going to move from high water potential to low water potential. So here we go, moving from the high value of negative 2.43 to the lower value of negative 3.3. So net flow of water is going to be into the cell. All right, question number five, very similar to question number four, but now we are dealing with a different solution. Now we're dealing with NaCl instead of sucrose. And they tell us in the problem, NaCl dissociates into two particles when in water. It's going to dissociate into two different ions. We know they're ions because of their charges. So the only thing that that's going to change for us is the I in the negative I CRT. So because it dissociates into two ions, and I is my ionization constant, I is going to be 2 in this problem. Then everything else is going to remain the same since it's still at the same temperature and same concentration. So when I do the math on that one, I'm going to get about negative 4.87 bars when I round. So if I take a look at my picture again, we're dealing with that same root tissue. Um, negative 3.3 bars was its water potential. And the water potential of my solution is negative 4.87. So again, water is going to move from high water potential to low water potential. So it's going to flow out of the cell. So net flow for water is out of the cell. Okay, let's move on to these next couple problems. Problem number six, a plant cell with a, we're given its solute potential. And we're also told about the solute potential of an open beaker solution. Again, these are all hints. And we're told there is a constant volume. So if there's a constant volume, this means that there is no net flow of water, right? It means nothing's coming in and out, at least in terms of the net value. Um, we should know that even when something's in equilibrium, there are things constantly moving in and out just at an equal rate. So I need to find the cell's pressure potential, and I am given its solute potential. What I can do is I can use this information to solve for the pressure potential. So when there's no net flow of water, that is when the water potentials are equal. So the water potential of the cell is equal to the water potential of our solution. Now, for the cell, there's going to be a pressure potential and its solute potential, which was negative 7.5 bars. The water potential of my solution, since it's an open beaker, the pressure is zero, or pressure potential. And we know its solute potential is negative 4. So now it's just a matter of solving for my variable. And that leaves me with my pressure potential, which is equal to 3.5 bars. Question number 7. Um, this one is talking about a cell. It gives us some concentrations and temperatures. And it mentions equilibrium. Equilibrium should be a hint for us 
that again, there is no net flow. So my water potential of my cell will be equal to that of my solution. So I can go ahead and set this up. We know we are in an open container. So for the solution, its water potential is equal to its solute potential. So it's equal to negative ICRT for that solution. For my cell, there is a pressure potential. And then we are adding its solute potential, which we will need to solve for. Again, negative ICRT. So I'm going to keep writing up over here. So now I have my pressure potential for the cell is going to be equal to the solute potential of the solution. So it's glucose. We have negative 1. That's the I. Concentration of glucose, 0.5. Our R, which is our constant. And the temperature, which is 293 in Kelvin. So that is my water potential for the solution. And then I would be adding the solute potential from the cell. So adding I again, it's glucose. So 1 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.0831 times 293. And when I do the math on this one, again, you are allowed a calculator on the AP exam. We would solve for 2.44 bars as our pressure potential in the cell. Now, finally, let's take a look at number 8. Very similar, except we're dealing with some different concentrations. And this time, we are given the pressure potential. So, again, our hint should be we're seeing equilibrium. So, that means our water potentials are equal, the one for the cell and the one for the solution. So the water potential for the cell, again, as is always the equation for water potential, it's the pressure potential plus the solute potential. They give us the pressure potential for the cell, it's three bars, plus whatever the solute potential is for the cell. And then we are given information about the solution, we are told the concentration. So we could then solve for the solute potential for the solution. And we are also told it's an open beaker. So we know the pressure potential is zero for our solution. And the solute potential would be negative ICRT. So we got now at this point, we have three plus our solute potential for the cell equal to 0 minus 1 times concentration of our solution, 0 0.4, times our constant, and then times the temperature in Kelvin, which would be 293. So now I have that my solute potential is equal to, when you do the math on that, negative 12.74 seven, four bars. Now, they're asking us for the molar concentration of sucrose in the cell. So I need to take it one step further. I know that for a solute potential, it's negative ICRT. And I am solving now for C because that is my molar concentration. So I'm going to plug in the rest of my values because it is a sucrose solution. I is one. Again, we're solving for C. We have our constant R. And we have our temperature, right? 20 degrees Celsius plus my 273 to turn it into Kelvin. It's going to be equal to my negative 12.74. And now it's just a matter of solving for C. And I would get C is equal to 0 0.52 molar or moles per liter. There you go. There's how to solve a bunch of different types of water potential problems.